Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here's a fun little problem I saw on Reddit Ask Math. Solve for all t between 0 and 2 pi, such that cosine of 2t is equal to negative cosine of 3t. Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. So to get started, you might graph out these two equations and see where they intersect. It's a very straightforward thing to do in a tool like Desmos, and then you can just click on the different points of intersection and you'll get there are five different solutions to this. Pi over five, three pi over five, pi, seven pi over five, and nine pi over five. So if you have access to a graphing calculator, you could solve this very easily but it doesn't exactly give you an understanding of why this is true. So let's go through the long ways to solve the problem. So method one is to use the double and triple angle formulas. We'll use the formula for cosine of 2t and for cosine of 3t. This will reduce the equation to a variable that just depends on the cosine of t. So we have two multiplied by the square of cosine t minus one is equal to the opposite, and we have four multiplied by cosine of t cubed minus three cosine of t. So let's bring everything to the left side of the equation, and we will make this a cubic equation in the variable cosine of t. So we'll let u be equal to cosine of t, and then we end up with the cubic equation, four u cubed minus three u plus two u squared minus one is equal to zero. Let's just rearrange this so we have four u cubed plus two u squared minus three u minus one is equal to zero. So now how do we solve this equation? We can start by experimenting with values. A good way to guess is to use the rational root theorem. We look at the coefficient of the constant term, in this case one, and we look at the coefficient of the highest power, in this case it'll be four attached to u cubed. So the factors of each of these, well, the factors of one are just one, and then the factors of four will be equal to one multiplied by four or two multiplied by two. So we want plus or minus the factors of the constant term divided by the leading term. So we end up with plus or minus one divided by the options of one, two, or four. So we end up with plus or minus the options of one, one half, and one over four. So we have six candidates for rational roots. We have plus one and minus one, plus one half and minus one half, and plus one over four or minus one over four. So let's just take a lucky guess and substitute u is equal to minus one. If we do that, we get this equation is equal to zero. In other words, u is equal to minus one is a root of the cubic equation. If you substitute the other candidates, you will not get that the equation is equal to zero. They are not roots. So we figured out one root of this cubic equation. How are we going to figure out the other two roots? Well, if u is equal to minus one is a root, then we know that u plus one is a factor of this equation. So we can divide this equation by u plus one, and we will get a resulting quadratic equation. So let's go ahead and do this long division. We take this cubic equation and we divide it by the factor u plus one. So we first multiply by four u squared. This will result in four u cubed plus four u squared, which we subtract. The four u cubed terms will cancel out and then we end up with minus two u squared. We then need to drop down the next term of minus three u. We now have the next term will be minus two u when we multiply this by u plus one, we get minus two u squared minus two u. Subtracting this out, we end up with the result of minus u. So finally, we are going to drop down this last term of minus one, and then we subtract one, and we end up subtracting out minus u minus one, so this will all cancel out, so there's no remainder. So this evenly divides through to get the quadratic equation four u squared minus two u minus one. So what we have shown here is that u plus one multiplied by this quadratic equation is equal to the original 
cubic equation. We want this all to be equal to zero, and that means either the linear term is equal to zero, that means u is equal to minus one, or this quadratic equation is equal to zero. So we need to solve this quadratic equation, and we go ahead and use the quadratic formula. We go through the steps, and we're going to end up with two different possibilities, one plus or minus root five all over four. So there are two more cases to consider. We now need to go back and remember that u was equal to cosine of t. So suppose that u is equal to minus one, so minus one is equal to cosine of t. For t between zero and two pi, the only solution is that t is equal to pi. Let's now set one plus root five all over four is equal to cosine of t. What are the solutions to this? Well, you might know the value or you might need to use a calculator or a table. You can look up that the arc cosine of this value is equal to 36 degrees or pi over five radians. So pi over five is one answer, but we must recall that cosine of two pi minus x is equal to x. So we can also have the value of nine pi over five. We finally solve the last root equal to cosine of t. In this case, using a calculator, we get that t is equal to three pi over five. We again use that cosine of two pi minus x is equal to x. So the other value is seven pi over five. So we have found five solutions to this equation and putting them in ascending order, t is equal to pi over five, three pi over five, pi, seven pi over five, and nine pi over five. And that's the answer. So although it took us a lot of steps, we were able to figure out the answer. However, this was a very long method. So now let me present a couple of quicker ways to solve this problem. Another way to work this out is to use the sum to product formula. So we have cosine of 2t is equal to minus cosine of 3t. Let's bring everything to the left side of the equation. So we have cosine of 3t plus cosine of 2t is equal to zero. So we have a sum of cosines, which we wanna turn into a product. So the formula is cosine of a plus cosine of b is equal to two times the cosine of one half of a plus b multiplied by cosine of one half a minus b. In this case, a is equal to three t and b is equal to two t. So we substitute into this formula, changing the sum into a product. We have two multiplied by the cosine of one half of three t plus two t multiplied by cosine of one half of three t minus two t. This is all equal to zero. So let's simplify this equation. We can of course divide both sides of the equation by two to eliminate the two term. Now, three t plus two t is equal to five t and three t minus two t is equal to t. So the entire equation simplifies to be cosine of five t over two multiplied by cosine of t over two is equal to zero. Since the product of these two cosine terms is equal to zero, at least one of them must be equal to zero. So we either have cosine of five t over two is equal to zero or cosine of t over two is equal to zero. So it remains to solve these equations. Let's go through each case. If cosine of five t over two is equal to zero, then five t over two is equal to pi over two, three pi over two, five pi over two, seven pi over two, nine pi over two, or so on. Solving for t, we get that t is equal to pi over five, three pi over five, pi, seven pi over five, nine pi over five, and any further case will be larger than two pi. These are the only solutions where t is between zero and two pi. Now let's solve the other equation. Cosine of t over two is equal to zero. We would need that t over two is equal to pi over two, three pi over two, or we can add two pi multiples to any of these values. In this case, t is equal to pi is the only solution where t is between zero and two pi. Therefore, we have five solutions to this equation. t is equal to pi over five, three pi over five, pi, seven pi over five, and nine pi over five. But there's still one more way to solve this problem that I think is easy. So let's go through another method. This will be to add a rotation. So notice, that cosine of x plus pi is equal to opposite the cosine of x. So in this case, we have minus cosine of 3t 
and let's add pi to the angle to make it some positive value. So if we have cosine of 3t plus pi, this will be equal to minus cosine of 3t. So we can substitute the left-hand side of the equation for minus cosine of 3t. So we have cosine of 2t is equal to cosine of 3t plus pi. We can now also employ the fact that cosine of x is equal to cosine of minus x. So this is all also equal to cosine of minus 2t. So now look at this equation. We have cosine of minus 2t is equal to cosine of 2t is equal to cosine of 3t plus pi. So we can now take the arc cosine and then set the angles equal to each other except for a multiple of 2 pi. Notice we're considering cosine of 2t and cosine of minus 2t, so we're taking care of the symmetry. So in this case, let's set that cosine of 2t is equal to cosine of 3t plus pi. This means that the angles will differ by a multiple of 2 pi. So 2t is equal to 3t plus pi plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. We can simplify this equation that minus t is equal to pi plus 2 pi k, and the only value that's going to be in the range of 0 to 2 pi will be that t is equal to pi. Now let's solve the other pair. We have cosine of 3t plus pi is equal to cosine of minus 2t. So we'll set minus 2t equal to 3t plus pi plus 2 pi k. We simplify this equation, and we're going to get five different results. t is equal to pi over 5, 3 pi over 5, pi, 7 pi over 5, and 9 pi over 5. And that's the answer. What an interesting equation, and it's fun that there are multiple ways to solve this problem. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems one video at a time.